All right, everybody, welcome to Math with Grace. All right, everybody, today we are starting book 10, our final book of the semester. I'm so proud of you guys. You've pushed through, you've worked hard, and now we're going to start book 10, which is super review of everything we've learned in geometry. So buckle up, because here we go. So we've had a little bit of a break from proofs and such, but here we go. We're going to dive back in. All right. I'm just going to do a quick overview of most of this stuff. I will will do one or two practice problems as we go, but a lot of this you guys just really need to read through and review um, the meanings of such things. So the first section here is just geometry as a system and how geometry works and different vocabulary words, postulates and theorems that we've studied. Okay, if you have been saving up your postulates and theorems pages and made a nice packet, that will do you very well in this um, book and on your quizzes and tests for this book and your final test of the semester especially, um, please use that to help you. Um, but all of we're, it's this book is going to review every single postulate theorem corollary that we've talked about, and I don't have time to reread them all. So please read through and study up on those. The next section in the book, starting on page six, is all about proofs and the different um, words that we use when we're talking about proofs. Um, please review your compiled truth table. All right, and the different layouts of that. Please review your converse, your inverse, contrapositive, all that stuff, okay? All that stuff is going to be important for this section. So now I'm going to do a couple of problems from this section. All right, the first problem I want to look at right now is um, problem 128. And it reads, um, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. And what these problems want us to do, this section of problems, is write the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive of each of those, okay? First thing we need to decide is what is our hypothesis and what is our conclusion, right? Our P and our Q. So we need to figure out what those are first. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to rewrite this in the terms that they're asking, okay? So... The diagonals of a parallelogram is our P, okay? And our Q is going to be the fact that they bisect each other, okay? Diagonals of a parallelogram are something that exists. The fact that they bisect each other is something that exists, okay? So these are our two different parts, the diagonals of a parallelogram and then bisecting each other, our P and our Q. Now, if you look back at your truth table, You'll, you can find out that the converse is basically saying, if Q, then P, okay? If we look at our inverse, we can see that it is saying, not P, if not P, then not Q, okay? And our contrapositive is saying, if not Q, then not P, and this is the way that we want to write each of these then. So for our converse, we're going to say we want if Q, then P. So if diagonals bisect each other, okay, comma, then, okay, then the figure is a parallelogram. Then the figure is a parallelogram, okay? So we put our bisecting of diagonals first. If diagonals bisect each other, then the figure is a parallelogram, okay? We've switched it around. So now let's look at the inverse. We want not P. So if the figure is not a parallelogram, okay, then the diagonals do not bisect each other, okay? If the figure is not a parallelogram, then the diagonals do not bisect each other, not P, not Q. All right. 
Now the contrapositive is not Q, then if not Q, then not P. All right, so if the diagonals do not bisect each other, oh my gosh, where's my spelling going today? Comma, then the figure is not a parallelogram, okay? So the figure is not a parallelogram. Sorry for the slop handwriting, I'm trying to write fast, right? So converse is if Q, then P. Inverse is if not P, then not Q. And the contrapositive is if not Q, then not P. All right, look at your truth tables and practice with these, setting them up for your if then statements. Remember, we're always gonna have an if and then a then, all right? Now I'd like to take a look at problem 137. All right, problem 137 and the other problems in this section give us our list of our P's and our Q's and how they relate. So here's P, here's Q. They want to know if P then Q, which remember, if you look at your truth table, is a conditional statement, okay? It is a conditional statement. And if you look at your truth table, it will tell you what the answers are, but let's think it through a little bit so that we can figure it out. They wanna know what's true or false, all right? So if P, if your hypothesis is true, but your conclusion is false, then your statement in general is false, okay? Your conclusion was false, therefore your statement is false, okay? Here, if our hypothesis is false and our conclusion is false, then it actually works out that our condition is true, okay? They're both false, therefore the conditional, if P then Q is true, all right? Looking at the next one, if P is true, then Q is true. So this statement as a conditional statement is also true, okay? And we have here, if our con uh, hypothesis is false, but our conclusion is true, then this as well is a true conditional statement, okay? So here, our conclusion was false when our hypothesis is tr was true. Therefore, our conditional statement was false. But every other term here, because both of these falses agreed, that caused it to be a truth. And then these two were true because their conclusions were true, okay? We've got these two true because the conclusion was true. This is true because they were both false. And in this case, two falses makes a true, okay? And then here, because our conclusion was false, our statement was false. So please study those uh, truth tables so that you can you know, understand how these work out together. The next area of the book is all about angle relationships and parallels, okay? So again, it's all the review of our definitions, our postulates, our theorems that we've already talked about this through this entire year of geometry, okay? Review these theorems and postulates so that they're fresh in your mind as you move through the, this section. The first problem I wanna talk about is problem 1.53. We have done a lot of proofs in class a lot of proofs through this year of geometry. Um, it just seems like this is what geometry was made for, right? <laughs> but um, we're gonna look at a couple more. I'm gonna walk through a few for this, the rest of these couple of sections we're talking about. And the one I wanna talk about today is uh, 153. So like any proof, I know it's been a while, but like any proof, we always start with our given, right? So our statement is, is that angle one is equal to angle three. And our reason for that is that it was given information, right? So I'm gonna mark it. Angle one is equal to angle three, all right? They want us to prove that line A is parallel to line B, all right? So. Thinking about what we've just reviewed in all of our 
postulates in our theorems, what could be a good logical next step? Well, where we're going to go next is we're going to state that angle one is equal to angle two. Okay, and why is angle one? Why is angle one and angle two equal? Well, they are equal because vertical angles are equal. Okay, please feel free to abbreviate as long as you understand what the abbreviations mean, as long as I can understand on your test what the abbreviations mean. Okay, so now we have angle one and angle two equal as well. What could be our next step? All right, we're trying to find a relationship between A and B. Well, that relationship can start with angle two and three. So now I'm going to say that angle two is equal to angle three. And why can I state that? What is my reasoning behind that? Well, it's substitution, right? If angle one is equal to angle three and angle one is equal to angle two, then angle two and three must be equal by substitution, okay? So now we have angle two is equal to angle three. Remember when we were talking about relationships of angles, how we drew this box around them? Okay, well, that's what's gonna help us here. We can now say that A is parallel to B because angle two and angle three are in the same part of their box, right? That makes them corresponding angles. So if corresponding angles are equal, I can talk a lot faster than I can write here, angles are equal, then the lines are parallel, okay? If corresponding angles are equal, then the lines must be parallel, okay? Then the lines are parallel. Here's our if-then statement we were just reviewing in the last section, okay? And that's proof for number 153. All right, starting section two, we're gonna be reviewing triangles, quadrilaterals, polygons, and circles. Okay, and the first section here is congruent triangles and quadrilaterals. Again, our definitions, our postulates, and our theorems that we've studied all year long are condensed and reviewed in this section. Please read it thoroughly. Okay, let's take a look at problem 2.8. It's another proof. I said we would do a couple of these together, so let's work through some of these together. So 2.8 is this shape we've been given. Okay, labeled as such. And the information that we're giving, given, is that UT is parallel to RS and that UT is equal to RS. And that, again, our reason is that that was given information. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mark that my UT is equal to my RS because I like to visually see what we're talking about here. Okay, they want us to prove that angle S is equal to angle U. So they want to prove S is equal to U. Okay, seeing that, what should come into your mind is, okay, we probably need to prove congruent triangles, right? And then use our very favorite reason to solve. So let's get started with proving these triangles to be congruent since we are given two triangles. Okay, so what would be a logical next step? Well, we've got RT here, right? We could say that, that both triangles are sharing, remember? So we can say that RT is equal to TR. Remember, we cannot fold this in half here and have those triangles line up equally. So we need to make sure that we're writing these in the right order. For this top part, uh, URT, RT would be here. Okay, for this bottom part, it would be STR. Okay, so when they match up, it's RT is equal to TR because of, that's right, reflexive. Okay, they are reflexive. It's the same line. We're just comparing it to itself for two different purposes, right? Okay, so now we know that that is equal to itself. Okay, we need one more thing, though, to tie this up. Well, we're given the fact that we have parallel lines, so let's use that to our advantage. I'm gonna say that angle four is equal to angle two. Angle four is equal to angle two. RT is a transverse, 
right? It transverses these two parallel lines. So we can say that angle four is equal to angle two because alternate interior angles are equal, right? Two and four are alternate interior angles. They are, make up the inside of our Z, okay? So now we have a side, an angle, and a side, right? Right there is your clue that we now have congruent triangles. So we can say triangle RTU is congruent to triangle TRS, okay? RTU is congruent to TRS, all right? We've got to match up the corresponding parts. And we can say that, why? Because we have a side, angle, side. We have the SAS, all right? So this now is our final step, the fact that angle S is equal to angle U because our favorite reason is da, 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 da. that's right c p c t e corresponding parts of corresponding triangle or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal so s is equal to u because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles all right that is the proof for 2.8 all right next i want to take a look at problems 222 through 225 okay we are given this parallelogram, A, B, C, D. We're told that it is a parallelogram. And then we're told that angle A is equal to x plus 30. And angle D is equal to 2x plus 60. And they want us to solve for the measure of angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D. All right? So... We have to solve for x, basically, and then figure out what each angle is worth, okay? We need to use our knowledge of parallelograms. And our knowledge of parallelograms tells us, okay, that angle D and angle A, because they are adjacent angles, that they are supplementary. What does supplementary mean? We've been reviewing our vocabulary, right? Supplementary means they're equal to 180 degrees. So since we know that, we can say that x plus 30 plus 2x plus 60 is equal to 180. Angle A plus angle D is equal to 180. All right, now we can solve this just with our algebra skills. We have a total of 3x plus 90 on this side is equal to 180. Subtracting 90 from both sides tells us that 3x is equal to 90, right? When we divide by 3, we find out that x is equal to 30. Now we can punch that back in here, we'll substitute it back in to find out that angle A is equal to 30 plus 30. So we know that angle A is 60 degrees right? Angle D is 230s plus 60 or 60 plus 60. So we know that angle D is 120 degrees. Now, with our understanding still of parallelograms, we know that A and B must be supplementary angles as well. We also know that because D and B are across from each other that they are equal. So either way, we can find out that B is 120 degrees. And if B is 120 degrees, then C must be 60 degrees, okay? Don't get hung up on the fact that they put X's, they put a variable in here for your measurements, okay? You guys know what to do to solve, all right? So do not get confused or worried when they give you a variable to try to trip you up. I know you guys can handle it. Good job. All right. The next section that we're reviewing now are similar polygons. And just like before, definitions, postulates, theorem, the property of proportions. Please review those. You know how important they are in solving this stuff. All right. So again, please review and go over. If you haven't yet put together your theorem and postulate pages, now would be a good time to do so as we're reviewing this section by section.
All right, a problem that I'd like to look at in this section is problem 230. It is a proof, okay? And it's given us this shape and this bit of information, and they want us to prove that triangle MDF is similar to triangle NCA. All right, so like every other proof, our first state, a statement is our givens, right? So we are given the fact that EC is perpendicular to AC, that B, or sorry, that DB is perpendicular to AC, and that angle A is equal to angle F. All of this was given information, okay? And we, I'm gonna mark it here because I like to see things, angle A, is equal to angle F. Okay, um, just as a note on this uh, line, it or on this proof, it gives you five lines. Uh, you should be able to accomplish this in four. If you look at the answer key, they actually repeat a step. Um, the fact that angle A is equal to angle F is on there twice. I think it's just an error, no big deal. But let's take a look here at what we've got. We've given the fact that EC is perpendicular to AC, and also DB is perpendicular to AC. So we have two separate lines perpendicular to one single line, and that tells us something, right? That tells us that EC is parallel to DB, right? Because two lines perpendicular to the same line are parallel, okay? Two lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other, all right? So now we know that BD is parallel to EC. So where can that take us from there? Well, we can use that to our advantage with this transversal that runs across the two parallel lines, right? And so we know that angle one is equal to angle two, right? And why is angle one equal to angle two? Because alternate interior angles are equal, okay? This transversal crosses two parallel lines and it creates our Z, it's just a backwards one this time, okay? And it gives us our alternate interior angles being equal. So now remember, we're trying to find this triangle to be similar to this triangle. Now remember, when we're talking about similars, we don't need to find as many things equal as we did when we were talking about congruent triangles. So this is our final step, that triangle MDF is similar to triangle and C A. And why are they similar? What do they have in common? Well, they've got angle angle, right? When we're talking about similar triangles, we can use angle angle as a proof. We could use angle 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 and say that angle C is equal to angle D because if two triangles have two sets of equal angles and their third angles must be equal, but that's just a step that we don't need to take. It's just an extra step. We can stop right here and say that these triangles are similar because of angle, angle, okay? Please review these theorems and postulates so this stuff can be fresh in your mind. All right, so the next section is all about circles, but before I talk about that, I want to squinch down the book here. For problems um, 244 and, and for that section, it says, Find X and Y in these 30, 60, 90 triangles. And then it says use sine, cosine, and tangent. Please don't use sine, cosine, and tangent. You guys know how to find um, X and Y sides of a triangle based on this 30, 60, 90 triangles. That's enough to find the answers. You do not need to use the sine and cosine to solve these. Please, it just makes it actually more work. Okay, use what you know about 30, 60, 90 triangles to solve those problems, all right? That being said, the next section um, is all about circles, okay? Again, definitions, sorry, postulates, theorems, they are all here listed out for you to review. 
please take the time to review them. I'm not gonna go over any of the problems in this section as I feel like this review and the problems are, are something you guys can tackle. I know you can, all right? Please take your time through this and read these postulates over. Make notes in your postulates and theorems pages that you've got stapled together, like the good little students that you are, okay? Make notes for yourself so that when you get to your final test, which is covering all of this stuff, that it's going to be no problem. I know you guys can handle it, okay? So that being said, these are the two sections I have for you today. Your test um, for book nine has been emailed, um, and I can't wait to get those back. You guys are doing a great job. We're almost done with this year, and you will have conquered geometry. Keep up the good work, and until next week.